Hey. What's going on, San Francisco? <laughs> usually, I feel like we've done this a couple times, and I feel like usually you come out and do like a kick and stuff. But yeah. We're a little fancy. Tonight. Yeah, we got we got fancy. chairs. Yeah. It's plushy. <laughs> we're gonna have a discussion. I like the color you went with today. Thanks. I was gonna say I didn't, notice, about I didn't you. notice we did that until right now. No. Yeah, but we're looking good. good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah nice. Absolutely. <laughs> Let's give it up for Jordan, right? Yes. Thank you, Jordan, and the JCC and, for having us, and the team of the JCC. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for having us. It means a lot. So what do you want to get started with? Well, I don't know. Should we talk a little bit about this book? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> that I'm sure you've all bought in the lobby already. Right. That's why I like to hear. <laughs> nice jobs, nice jobs. It's uh, like, let's start, let's start at the beginning. Yeah. Let's start at the absolute beginning. So Knives and Ink, as Jordan was saying, was actually our second book. Uh, and it was our second book. Uh, after this wonderful book that we also did with Bloomsbury, which was the same publisher, God bless uh, our, our editor. Nancy Miller. Nancy Amazing. Miller and the team at Bloomsbury. Yeah. And so that actually started as a Tumblr. It did. Um, so Isaac and I go pretty far back. Um, there is this website called The Rumpus, which maybe some of you have heard of. Um, and Isaac was, yes, the managing editor on that. He tattooed it on his body, ladies and gentlemen. Um, Wow. And uh, <laughs> it means no a regrets. lot to everybody. Uh, and I was doing uh, a series called Meanwhile in San Francisco. And we would uh, work late in the night together to get these up online. And so we developed a friendship there. And we both have a love for stories. We both have a love for stories that maybe people don't really tell immediately. They might hold back a little bit. And we like kind of getting, out, getting them out of people. So Isaac called me up with this great idea one day. Which was for Meanwhile. Or mm -hmm. you're talking about pen and ink. Pen and ink, yeah. I'm going to jump back just a, just a smidge, no. which is that I really like to plug, uh, if you haven't picked up Wendy McNaughton's Meanwhile in San Francisco, and if you had, cheer. That's very it's nice. such a wonderful book. So basically, I was the managing editor of this website, and there's this incredible artist, like somebody I'd never met before. And I just got to work with her as she would basically kind of call me up at 4 a.m. and be like, yeah. how do I get this on the website? Right. Yeah. This technology. Yeah. It, was, it was a joy. <laughs> it was a joy. No, no, I don't um, know that. But, no. but they, were the, they were these incredible stories. And what she would do is she would capture whole neighborhoods here in San Francisco or whole communities just using the words from the people themselves and doing drawings of the entire place. And one of my favorite meanwhiles in San Francisco, hands down, is the San Francisco Library. Oh, and thanks. you should definitely, if you, haven't, if you haven't read it, I really recommend that you look it up. So one of these times, Wendy yeah. was like, I want to do one about bars. Bartenders. Yeah. And I'm like, Isaac, do you know anything about bars? And I knew things about bars. Like intimately. <laughs> so so um, Isaac became my guide into the bar world, if you will. I mean, you yourself were a bartender. Yeah, right? I'd, I'd, I'd worked at many bars. Uh, I had a service industry background here in San Francisco. Yeah. So, um, so I was like, I basically was like, oh yeah, I can absolutely give you a guided tour uh, of, of the bars of the mission. Yeah, that and, was fun. And that was fun, it was a good day. <laughs> but from that kind of sprung this friendship. Mm -hmm. And for a long time, I'd worked at a great bar here in the city called Zeitgeist. Yeah. And Zeitgeist, if you don't know, is open from 9 a.m. to 2 a.m. every day. Every day of the year. All, like even the holidays. Not, oh, all of them. Wow. I think there's like a day in January we close for 24 hours to clean. <laughs> and so. That's evident. Th it's not, don't get, it's, yeah, that's true too. It's not totally packed all the time though. So to kill time, we used to kind of like, you know, just anything. And by we used to, what I really mean is like, I was a very curious 23 year old. I used to annoy the other workers by asking them about the stories of their tattoos. Right. And it kind of, all of a sudden, it sparked to me this idea that Wendy was doing this Meanwhile series. I was like, what if you did kind of this Meanwhile thing, but just about the stories behind people's tattoos? Right, and then uh, I said, yeah, that sounds like a great idea. I maybe emailed her four <laughs> times and she was like, fine, I will maybe do that. And then you bought me a couple drinks. And then, yeah. yes, definitely, I think it was, yes. And so um, we started this thing that wasn't a book at first. It was actually a Tumblr. Do you guys know what that is, Tumblr? Yeah, it's like a, a website, a visually driven website. 
Um, so we reached out to a few different people who we knew had tattoos and we thought might have good stories behind it. Um, gathered those, figured out a way to draw it in a very simple way, like kind of develop the style that is pen and ink and knives and ink, um, which is really simple black and white outlines of the figure, so you get a sense of who they are in their body, but the focus is totally on the tattoo. The tattoo is like pretty precisely drawn and painted. Um, and then everything was handwritten because we wanted to make sure that the story felt like it was a very carefully told story and it was coming from somebody's heart, not just from their computer keys. Um, and develop that style and put it up on, on Tumblr. And so our first reader tonight is not actually in Knives and Ink. He was the first ever pen and ink yes. that ever went online. And this is actually what sparked the entire project, led to the book, led to the second book, because right when we published his, it immediately, uh, which was a term that I don't even think was like in a lot of usage at the mm. time, but it went viral. It blew up. And it blew up, and we all of a sudden, we knew that we were maybe on to something that people were interested in. So please welcome to the stage a wonderful author in his own right, Chris Collins. <laughs> You're going all the way to the podium over there, buddy. Right. <laughs> long walk, long walk. Give it up for Chris Collins, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. How many times has this been shared? What? How many times have you shared? Hello. Can you hear me by talking to this thing? All right. Uh, okay, I'm gonna talk about this tattoo situation. Um, yeah, I remember when you guys first told me about this project. And I really, I mean, in all seriousness, I thought it was, um, I thought it was really just like impressively ambitious that you went to like these great lengths to get people to take their clothes off for you. <laughs> uh, I, yeah, I, I, uh, I was on the way over here tonight and I was doing the math and I realized that I've had this tattoo more, more than not. I, I got it 19 years, no, I was 19 years old and now I'm uh, 1 million years old. So I've had it m most of my life. <laughs> Wait, but I don't it, really was, it was 19? I was 19. Wow. I don't really think about it much. It's on my back, you know, when things are in your back, you can't see them. Um, but I was trying to think about it tonight uh, and have some thoughts about it. I don't really care about tattoos very much, but I do like um, bookmarks. And, and that's what I think this was. So I'll read this little thing that I said when I was a younger person. <clears throat> um, I got this tattoo because I suspected one day I would think it would be stupid. <laughs> I wanted to mark time or mark the me that thought it was a good idea. 17 years later, I hardly remember it's there. It's 20 something years later now. I hardly remember it's there, but when I do, it reminds me that whatever I think now, I probably won't think later. Uh, why a bunny? It seemed like mostly tough types who were getting tattoos at the time, and I wanted something that wasn't that. <laughs> yeah. it. It's a tattoo. That was one thing that I think we found when we did the first book is that there's very minimal tattoo regret, I think. There are so many people got a tattoo at a time in their life when maybe that tattoo like captured their depth of, the depth of their feeling at that moment. And even though that feeling changes over time, it, it like Chris said, it's a bookmark of a time in their life. They can look back on it and it's a memory of how they were feeling then. Absolutely. And that's kind of what happened. Like that's, it's, it was clear when we published Chris's wonderful story about this kind of beautiful small tattoo. And like the fact that like the whole project is launched by him being like, because I thought one day it would be stupid. Right. And it's just like this beautiful moment because that just took off because I think it really connected with so many people, both who had decided not to get tattoos yeah. and people who had gotten tattoos um, that we knew we'd, we'd kind of tapped into something. 65,000 times that was shared. So yeah. a lot of people have seen that body. Huh? We'll talk about that later. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> It's, it's tons to you, Chris. All, of, all yeah. of the profits are gonna go to you. Uh, <laughs> but after that, seriously, after that, we realized we'd, we'd captured something. 
And it wasn't long before maybe other people had realized we'd captured something too. So this Tumblr that we were kind of doing as ultimate side projects. Mm -hmm. Wendy's career at the time was absolutely skyrocketing. I was going to a bar called Clooney's a lot. <laughs> like we were all <laughs> focused on like very important things. <laughs> And all of a sudden, uh, Bloomsbury, this publisher that we already mentioned, had shown interest. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it led us to this, like, this wonderful moment uh, where we got the chance to publish a book. Um, and so we published this book, and we were very, I, and stop me if I'm wrong, but I at least, I kind of felt like I had scammed somebody. <laughs> I was just like, yeah, you want to pub publish a book of our Tumblr yeah. that's already online for free? <laughs> for money? <laughs> Yes. Well, we did have <laughs> we had to reach out to a few more people. Right? Yes. I yes. mean, like about half of half of it was done, but then we had to find a bunch more people. But um, we reached out to like the literary community and a bunch, you know, a bunch of folks that we knew. Um, a lot of people who were online. Isaac is, you know, the books editor at BuzzFeed right now, and he's always just really involved in the online literary community. So we had a lot of folks who were just submitting a ton. Like, we were getting so many submissions. Yeah, I mean, it, and it really worked out, and it's very important that Wendy is the person that pointed that out, because she was, the also, one, she was also the one that ha had to hand letter yeah. every single one that we did. Great idea. So I love I that I... Yeah. <laughs> she was like, I was like, Wendy, do you want to invent a font? She was like, no, no, no. no. <laughs> artistic credibility. Yeah. And then I was like, oh, we have to copy edit the book now. Yeah. Yes, yeah. good, I appreciate that somebody's <laughs> for it. But so that, that was wonderful and we were very surprised. The response to the pen and ink book was actually very positive. We yep. made a bunch of best of lists, lists, including Brain Pickings, which is this incredible website, Huffington Post, Flavor Pill, a bunch of people really loved the book. And so the publisher came back to us and said, what about doing a second? And we had found when we had um, cast that wide net and talked to a bunch of people about their tattoos that there was groups of people who have a lot of tattoos. There are like veterans who have a lot of tattoos. There are prisoners who have a lot of tattoos. These are groups who are all represented in the first book. We have prison tattoos and veteran tattoos. Um, we have like musician chat tattoos. And there is definitely a ton of chefs with tattoos. So that seemed like a natural next fit. So the that's the thing. We sat down and we said, what's the group that we kind of feel like would be a great representation, something that would be fun to work on? And we chose chefs. Uh, and with that said, we're going to welcome uh, one of the first people that we were able to get in touch with, one of the first people that was part of uh, the Knives and Ink project, which is Mystical Great Trick. Yeah. Chris, you see which side she walked up? No. <laughs> Here I am. Hi. Hi. So I wanted to talk a little bit about, in my, my blurb, I talk about how my tattoo, which is in that oh, one. Right, right, right. <laughs> yep. That one um, was, talks about art. And it, um, for me, it was really important because I come from a family of four. We were all homeschoolers. Um, and everybody turned out to be an artist except me. Uh, I have a screenwriter, a musician, um, a musical theater, and an actor. And then there was me, who wasn't really doing anything except messing around in the kitchen. And I um, became a chef. I was in London for 10 years, which is where I learned to cook. And then I moved back here, back home. And I was, had kids at this point. And, um, wanted to get a chef tattoo, as we're talking about. All chefs have tattoos, most chefs have tattoos. And this was number 13. Not food, all the others are not food related. And I was worried about it, because a little bit superstitious. Um, but it's turned out to be really lucky. And I'll read my little blurb about why I got it. Um, so, my six-year-old son had asked me what the word chef meant. So, because I'm a homeschooler, we went to the dictionary and started reading, and when we found the entry for cooking, he slowly read it aloud to me, sounding out each consonant, simple words hinting at a great power. And it represented exactly how I felt about food and cooking. I had it placed somewhere that held just as much weight, the back of my arm, chopping, whisking, mixing, my feeling arm, and I love seeing people stare at it and 
they, like, I am always catching people behind me going like this. Um, <laughs> and so when I'm working, it's displayed prominently, and it kind of reminds me and everybody else about why we're here, and that's for the art. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>Let's do chefs. Yeah. <laughs> do, you do you understand food? No. No. We like to eat it. Well, we love to eat it. <laughs> um, at the time, neither of us cooked. Right. Um, but we both had a little bit of history in the restaurant industry. Um, I worked at a restaurant for two days. <laughs> <laughs> and I got fired. <laughs> Incredible background. I had been actually working... Uh, in the service industry, off and on since I was 12. Um, but the thing is, is that I've always been a front of the house guy. I've always been the guy working at Buca de Beppo, yeah. singing, singing happy birthday about nine times a night. <laughs> I've always been a waiter, I've always been a host, I've always been uh, a door guy. Mm. I've kind of always been the, 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 the front, the friendly face. Um, and I think that's part of where this project came from is always going back into the back of the house, going back into the back of the kitchen, being very enamored. You're enamored sometimes by the people that are meanest to you. <laughs> just going in the back, you know, just being like, happy birthday, just, yeah, good vibes coming in. Hey guys, what's up? Okay, grab a hot plate. No, you don't like me. All right, we're doing this. And just whisk right out the other end of the door. Uh, but I would, I would eventually win people over. We'd go out for drinks after work. And I've always admired chefs, and I talk a little bit about this in the intro to the book, because I don't know how to do it. I was raised on, like, Chef Boyardee. I was raised by a mother who loved me in, like, so many different ways, but, like, for, like, culinary experience, it was like, did you know if you put peanut butter and mixed it with ice cream, it's delicious? <laughs> Which is actually true. That's, like, some... People should charge like 30 duck bucks a scoop up for that and like serve it somewhere because it's a really good idea. But we like did not come from kind of this culinary experience. Um, the one time I did get a chance to be a chef was here in San Francisco. Uh, I was out of a job. I desperately wanted to stay here because the city is so beautiful and I needed to make rent. And a good friend said, hey, my husband is starting a sushi catering company. And I was like, oh, the art of sushi. Yes, the thing that you have to train for like 10 years to do and like know how to handle knives. I could, I, I could do that. <laughs> no, nope, I'm sure I maybe even sold them on something. Like, oh yeah, I, I used to do sushi, uh, the best sushi you've ever seen in Western Massachusetts, uh, where I'm from. Uh, but they were, I, I got very lucky in that they, they hired me and they allowed me to work. I'm pretty sure just because I would show up on time at 5 a.m. Uh, and, and nothing else. And so that man who was starting that catering company back then now runs one of the most popular sushi restaurants in San Francisco. Yeah. Ichi Sushi. Ichi Sushi. Please welcome Best. Tim Archuleta. Woo! Hello. Hi. New boots, sorry, a little longer than I thought they were. Mm -hmm. um, my name's Tim Archuleta. Woo! I'm one of the owners, with my lovely wife, Erin, of Ichi Sushi in San Francisco. That's right, my last name is Archuleta, and I do make sushi. I know it sounds a little <laughs> crazy, but it does happen from time to time. That's not Japanese? <laughs> Archuleta-san. <laughs> That's Japanese. And I hired Isaac because he looked so Japanese. I figured it, to make it more authentic, <laughs> this guy was gonna sell my sushi better than anybody else, because, you know. Um, <laughs> so Isaac would show up on time at five o'clock 
in the morning, because that's the time we started to make sushi for catering. And the first question I would ask him, have you slept yet? <laughs> and most of the time it was, no, I have not. I had another job. <laughs> <laughs> Zeitgeist. <laughs> Um, so it's funny because I wanted to tell two different tattoo stories because I have four tattoos and they're all pretty funny. Um, this one, but I'm going to stick to the stick to the book because I was my wife told me not to. So no, tell I, the other I, one. <laughs> you, real quick, tell it. Sean is Sean is reading later in the night. Okay. So I have. So these are my tattoos that are in the book. I also have this tattoo here on my arm, which says brother and kanji. And um, I was apprenticing a Japanese old script. And I was apprenticing as, as, a, as a sushi chef in a place called Tokyo Gogo -Go in the Mission back in the day. And Sean, who we'll be talking earlier or later, graduated from college or was graduating that weekend. So to, to celebrate and to, to, to remember this time of him graduating college, we went out and got tattoos. And of course, you know, we were young and we were like, what are we going to get? So we're at the tattoo shop and we had no idea and we saw this like, oh my God, brother, you know, you're like my, you're like my blood, you're like my brother. <laughs> Even though, you know, we're, no, we're not blood, but um, we felt like we were. And we got these tattoos and I was very excited to go home. I was, and I, by the way, I had to like beg my chef to let me have a whole weekend off to go celebrate because having weekends off was not something you really do in the restaurant industry. But, so I'm coming home and I'm like, at least I'm gonna come home with something really authentic and really awesome for this Japanese restaurant. And I come home and I grab my chef and I'm like, Kyoshi, check this out. I got this tattoo, it's so awesome, you're gonna love it. And I pull up my arm and I show him the tattoo and he goes, why did you get boyfriend written on <laughs> your arm? No. And then walks away like nothing. <laughs> so I'm like, are you, what? No, what? <laughs> so I'm walking around and I'm trying to find him. I couldn't find him anywhere. And I was like, dude, like what? And he's in the bathroom and he's like got tears coming out of his eyes. <laughs> he goes, I like to tell that to people because nobody ever knows what it means. Cause I'm, I can actually read it, you can't. <laughs> which is how a lot of tattoos actually happen, so. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's, that's that tattoo. Um, these two tattoos, I'm actually not gonna read verbatim from the book, because I read horribly in front of public. Um, so I was, for, the, for the, the dragon, I was at a point in my life when I was trying to find some, uh, some spiritual help, and I was, I've been going to Catholic school. I went to Catholic school from kindergarten to eighth grade. So I had this really demented <laughs> view of Catholicism and of Jesus and of, you know, weird things that you're going to hell for things that you just do normally as <laughs> people. I won't get too specific. Um, <laughs> so I was having this, like, so me and Jesus were having this little, like, let's just see other people kind of like face in our, in, in, our, in, our, in our lives. And Buddha was kind of cute, kind of looked like me too a little bit. So I was like, hey, let's, let's go on some dates. And I was reading some books and in the, the front cover of one of these Tibetan Buddhist books was that dragon. And I was like, that's amazing. I want that on my arm. And I went out and had the tattoo done, was very excited. Um, I had never had, gotten a tattoo that big. Uh, halfway through, I was like, it looks pretty good the way it is. And it was like half done because I was dying from the pain. I, luckily, the guy talked me into finishing it. Um, so a couple years later, um, I was, okay, like I need, this looks kind of weird to have one, let's have the other one. So I got the tiger and they're both power symbols. So in, the philosophy is if you have one power symbol going up and one going down, it creates this balance in your life, which I'm still looking for. Maybe I need to get 
some more tattoos to balance out my <laughs> life because that quite hasn't worked out yet. But um, yeah, so that's, that's the reason I got these tattoos. But I think the best part is that the dragon my wife calls the puppy and the tiger my wife calls the kitty. <laughs> so it's the puppy and kitty tattoos I have on my face. That's great. Woo! Thank you. Uh, that's Tim Archuleta, and I love that man very, very much. Uh, and that was amazing. But so from there, this is this, is this thing. Uh, we kind of realized this, this moment um, with pen and ink, we had been able, uh, it lived online, it lived on Tumblr, and it was open to everyone. And so there was this idea that we could kind of just say, hey, please submit pictures and stories. And, uh, and people submitted. And people submitted. A lot. Yeah. yeah. But for this, neither of us were really in the um, restaurant community. So we had to talk to our friends who we knew. So we talked to like Tim. We talked to our um, friends, Karen and Anthony, who are behind Mission Chinese and the restaurant, The Perennial in Commonwealth. And- Hang on real quick. Let's like, give it up for Mission Chinese for being yeah. here tonight. Amazing. And a couple more people and then we're like, uh, uh, that's kind of like, who else did we talk like to? It was almost like I opened up an inbox and like moths would fly out. Yeah. <laughs> And, uh, and all of a sudden it became, it was like, oh, well, chefs, they don't live online. These are people who are working on their art every day. They're making their food. They're not kind of looking to be a, a part of this thing because they are out there building their own thing. And they are on their feet and they are working. Right, so our like, um, effort to recruit people for this project through like Twitter wasn't really working that well. Or like Facebook, not so much. <laughs> so we had to find a really different approach, which is calling people yeah <laughs> and journalism and really reaching yeah. out to people and like trying to track down the right people and uh, oh my friend of a friend and like reaching out to these to these basically different communities because the next thing that you're doing is you're talking about trust because people are trusting you with their stories because this book is filled with so many deeply personal stories so it was about connecting with people in different ways and then kind of being like hey here's the project Please go look at pen and ink when you have time. Mm -hmm. Really, like, we really want to do you right and do a respectful rendition both of your tattoo and of your story. And it, it, it made for, like, basically this book filled with some deeply personal stories. Yeah. Um, it wasn't just all, it was like a mix of food tattoos, but also personal tattoos, which meant the world to us. Yeah, um, for sure. And so... So the next one that we want to um, share, a person we want to bring up, uh, is a really personal story. It's a fantastic story. Um, Michelle Pusatari. Um, if we could get you with you. Can you guys see me? <laughs> <laughs> a little short over here. Um, so... It's kind of funny to be here tonight because I actually started Nana Joe's in this building, which is kind of crazy. I own a granola company and this is the first kitchen that I rented. I wow. rented the dairy kitchen for real. It's so cool. So, that wait, was, wait, what year was that? That was 2010. And you awesome. started the company and you rented it right out here from this building? Yeah, I rented um, some space in the dairy kitchen. That's awesome. Yeah. Kind of cool. That's awesome. So my tattoo, that's what we're talking about, um, is a big giant red KitchenAid, <laughs> right? So I have a whisk and an offset spatula. I'm a pastry chef, was a trained pastry chef, still kind of am. Now I'm just a master of granola, all things granola. Um, but I wanted to have a KitchenAid on there because I was always so fascinated with like a big red KitchenAid, the shiny ones that you always saw in people's houses, and I just always wanted one. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna get this tattooed on my, on my arm. And when I went to go get it tattooed on my arm, I, I said, okay, I want a KitchenAid, and she'd already done this. It's like cookies and cupcakes, like, 
you know, when you go like that and it's birds. And I was like, I want it to be cookies and cupcakes. And she's like, whatever. And she just tattooed it on my arm. So when the KitchenAid came around, um, I went there and she was like, because they do the stencils and they put it on you. And I was like, uh, is, is it going to be that big? And she's like, yeah, I think it would look really great that big. And I was like, that, that's really, really big. <laughs> so <laughs> I decided, OK, she, she's got a vision. So I let her do it that big. And I had a banner, Baker Die, up here. And then on, like, right at my um, crease with my elbow, I wanted to have another banner. And I was like playing around with it. And I had newly discovered something about myself that was hard, but it was also very eye-opening to me that I was an alcoholic. And now I'm going to read my story. <laughs> I was about six months sober when I got this tattoo and feeling incredibly clear-minded, focused, no longer anxiously wondering when that next drink was gonna come. A burden had been lifted from my shoulders. I found a new group of friends and was regularly going to meetings. I already had a banner tattoo that read, Bake or Die, and I decided my new lifestyle called for another one, sweet and sober seemed to fit, but I wanted to wait just a little bit longer to make sure of my commitment. Four months later, I was back under the gun, and that was almost 10 years ago. There are so many things that I wouldn't have accomplished without being sober. My marriage to the perfect partner and my business. Life has a funny way of trying to teach us lessons and giving us the best directions to grow and prosper. All we have to do is listen, implement, and create. And that's my tattoo story. Yeah. Woo! Thank you so much. Shall be deterred. So great. So there's like, I, I mean, there's so many different kinds of stories in the book. Some of them, like Isaac was saying, are related to food, directly or indirectly. So many of them are super deep and personal and revealing. And we feel really, really honored that people would share these stories with us and with everybody else. So, and that's the thing is that it was like it was it was this trust. Um, there's another side to tattoos though, also, which yep. is hilarity yeah. and stupidity. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the thing uh, I was saying about regret—that's totally not true. <laughs> a lot of people regret them. Uh, my first tattoo <laughs> is a Celtic tree of life, which is when the roots <laughs> connect with the branches and and form a circle inside of a tribal sun. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like the cover of a Godsmack album. <laughs> and I got to enjoy it. I was 17. I got to enjoy it for one hour before I went back to my janitorial shift. Wow. And my manager looked at it and he said, oh, it's, uh, it's Spider-Man getting his Spidey sense. <laughs> so for one hour, I thought I had a cool tattoo. And then I was like, oh, my God, no, I have Spider-Man getting his Spidey sense tattooed on me. Wow. So there are these... That's there are these deep. There, yeah. <laughs> but there, there's this funny side to it, but there's also this, this, this beautiful side. But the funny side is right. one of your favorites from Pen and Ink. We have, yeah, there's some really great ones in Pen and Ink. And one of the best, um, I think, is a woman who has her 10 toes all tattooed. Um, and they spell out two words, pizza party. <laughs> and this is her story. When we asked her, tell us about your tattoo, the meaning behind pizza party. <laughs> she said, I really fucking love pizza. <laughs> That's it. That's the story. So like, it's also fun. Um, so there are, yeah. there, are these, there are these short moments. There are these reasons. Sometimes it's a whim, sometimes it's a joke, sometimes it's a Godsmack album that you think represents all of the universe. Uh, but other times it is actually just for the art. And it's really important to us um, because Wendy is obviously representing uh, tattooist art with her drawing. Right, and that's been a super fun thing for me uh, painting is that I'm spending a ton of time looking, I'm working from photos for these, and so I'm spending a ton of time looking at really, really detailed, um, you know, tattoo art that is done. I mean, it's, it's an incredible art form, and so I've learned a lot about it by looking basically like sometimes the little loop, like trying to get in there, trying to figure out What's what loop? the tattoo artist did. A loop. What's a loop? 
A, a loop is like a magnifying glass that if you're like a geek, you like hold over <laughs> um, a photo to see how everything's made. Um, so it's really, the artwork is incredibly beautiful. Yeah, and so we, in, in pen and ink we did this, and in knives and ink we did this, which is that we made sure to honor all the tattoo artists in the back of the book, because we really truly believe that this is also a beautiful art form. Uh, you know, yes, sometimes it is a trailer in Walpole, New Hampshire, where there's a nuclear power plant, uh, and you're 17, but other times they are actually <laughs> great works of art. Um, and with that said, we want to welcome <laughs> Sean Thomas, a blue plate to the stage. Yeah. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Isaac, Wendy, first and foremost, thank you so much for including me in your book, and congratulations. Thank you. Because it's awesome. Um, yes. The artwork is lovely. I do take issue with the fact that you left out my chiseled abs, but that's okay. <laughs> we'll forget about that part. <laughs> my bad. Um, I will just stutter my, stutter my way through this thing here. Um, so as Timmy was saying, we had gotten the brother tattoo or the boyfriend tattoo <laughs> when I first finished school, which actually would have been appropriate because we were completely inseparable uh, when we were in high school, and I'm sure that both of our parents thought that we were boyfriend and boyfriend, most certainly. <laughs> we spent tons and tons of time together, but... Where was high school? Uh, in Sacramento, California, where we grew up. Um, so we had first gotten these kanji characters, and then, I don't know, I've been thinking about this a ton. I was thinking about it when I was corresponding with Isaac, you know, about the tattoo, and I don't know, we'll keep this short and sweet. When I was a kid, I was raised in a huge Italian family, and I don't know, my kind of culinary life and the rest of my life has kind of evolved, kind of paralleled with that. So, you know, Italian gatherings, they're huge, they revolve around food, and I obviously became a chef at this point in my life, and it was just kind of a natural progression. But as a child, so I grew up in these apartments, and around the corner there was a Japanese restaurant called Nagato Sukiyaki, which still exists. Um, and my mother started taking me there as a kid, probably from age four. And to this day, I mean, literally to this day, everything at that restaurant tastes the exact same as it did as when I was a kid. I mean, and those, so those kind of like my grandmother's food and Nagato, that food just like stuck with me. And those like taste bud memories, like they've always been with me. Um, and coincidentally, Timmy and I ended up going to high school with the son and the daughter of the owners of that restaurant, which was even more awesome because a little more street cred when we went to Nagato. Um, and so at the end of the day, I think like this, this here has kind of just like, as my food has and as my food has evolved, like this tattoo kind of bled out from those characters because um, it all started with those two things in a little frame. And then it kind of just like spread down my arm, across my chest, my other arm, across my chest. And that's kind of where it ended up. And then... Uh, you know, Isaac has condensed it, so I'm gonna do a little reading. <laughs> They're just pretty. <laughs> nice! <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, and you can find Sean Thomas again at Blue Plate. Uh, these are all restaurants and granolas and people that we hope that you seek out. Uh, yeah. to talk about food. One thing that people have asked like about this kind of tattoo that uh, are really quite beautiful um, artwork like unto themselves on people's bodies is like why illustration and what does it mean to be drawing somebody else's artwork, right? And because um, there's all of this tattoo art that's shown in photography, you know, that's usually how you end up seeing it, but sometimes the, it's kind of distracting with like, I hate to say this, but the body kind of gets in the way sometimes and you can't really get, it's not focused on the tattoo as much. So it was cool as an artist to um, pay homage to another artist's artwork and try to represent it in a way that um, pays respect to what they have done, you know, but also is this new thing unto itself within the context of the book. It's almost like when I think picture it, it's like Wendy like at her giant drawing board just like working on this work like kind of looking at an, a tattoo artist 
with needle on an arm doing like the work. And trying the, to figure out like how they do it. Right, it's and like what totally that represents. Yeah. And then with this book, with Knives and Ink, what I think has made it so special, and it, it really has connected. We got this wonderful write-up in the San Francisco Chronicle, so thanks to, to that, yeah? Yeah. Logo, good. Uh, but it, it really meant a lot because the reviewer, you can look it up online, but he really got it because what added this extra texture to this book, I felt like that you had Wendy drawing the tattoo art, which was this art, but there was this extra step, which is that these chefs, these people, these makers of food were working on their own art at the same time. So it's like art representing art representing art. Very meta. In this, in this weird way. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it was, it was hard because eventually then we did get into it and we collected all these stories. And so it was about kind of trying to form it to try and, try and pinpoint it, to like laser beam it into what could actually make a story. And we like to think that we've done a good job with just like the different arcs and the different ebbs and flows uh, throughout it all because um, we collected it into this collection and we want to welcome uh, the last chef to the stage, yep. um, who we think that her, her tattoo really signifies not just her own story, but kind of what we tried to accomplish with this book, which does have so much more than pen and ink. There's wonderful spot drawings by Wendy McNaughton um, that you would want to frame and hang on your wall. There's actually <laughs> recipes from some of the chefs here tonight, and there are actually photographs um, yeah. of the food and the places where they worked. Um, but please welcome Marielle Fabi. Yeah. <laughs> Did I nail it? Did I get it? Yeah. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Um, so just as a um, segue from what you were saying, so this is actually a calligraphy, so it's an inception kind of tattoo because it's a calligraphy and then turned to a, into a tattoo and now it's into a book, so it just keeps recycling, so I think it's a really great thing. Um, I found this script on Tumblr, funny, um, by <laughs> a guy, his handle is It's a Living because he does this for a living, so he does calligraphy, so if you want to check out his work on Instagram, Tumblr, check them out. You might actually see the same script, which is now on me. Um, it was actually kind of a miracle that I even made it into this book because I'm kind of a nobody. I'm, I'm just a cook, a chef, whatever you want to call it. But uh, Monica Lowe, who is also in the book, she's on Instagram and I follow her. And she hooked it up. She's like, hey, I'm like, how did you get in this book? I saw the cover and she's just like, oh, contact Isaac contacted him literally it was like three days deadline i was like i need to get in this book so he's Don't like tell wendy this story yeah oh sorry so, so yeah no, no, so no, i'm, I'm kind of just like put it on the down low um and so he sent me so i sent him a photo and he's like i really like this but i'd like you to stand in a way that looks like this and i tried to google a photo that looks not so pornographic because it literally was like like this and I was like, yeah, I'm totally, yeah, so he's trying to <laughs> do the thing. And so, funny enough, so the story that I have about this tattoo involves my ex, who this tattoo is about, and he actually took this photo, which is really funny. Um, so, I had just graduated, or I was about, I was in culinary school, and my externship was at Cezanne. If anybody knows where Cezanne is, it's now a three Michelin star restaurant. Um, it was my first job. And I had just gotten to, um, so it was just really kind of very, very fast. It was like culinary school, externship, break up with my boyfriend, and now I'm like now working at a Michelin rated restaurant. And I'm, this was four years ago. Um, and now here we are, and I'm on a stage talking to all you beautiful people <laughs> about this book by these two beautiful people. So I'm gonna read this excerpt because it really, like Isaac was saying, kind of embodies why we all do this and why I'm still here doing this job. Um, I got this tattoo right before I turned 23. At the time, I was feeling a trifecta of emotions from all over the place. The end of a three-year relationship, my graduation from culinary school, and my acceptance of a job offer at a Michelin two-star restaurant. I wanted a tattoo that applied to my core philosophy when it comes to both life and food. It's a reminder that instead of yearning for more, more money, more accolades, more stars, I should strive to be better. 
Choosing quality over quantity is not about having less, but about having more of what matters most. Mary of Baby. That's beautiful. Yeah, that's so beautiful. Thank you. So we want to introduce one last person on the stage. Yeah, we might have a special guest surprise for you guys. What do you got? Well, Isaac. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll tell you this. Again, um, it means so much to us all that you've come here. Uh, and basically, the idea behind all of this is that we believe um, in people's stories, and we believe in people's art. And it means a lot to me that Wendy, like, would even have taken the time to collaborate with me on this project, Aww. not knowing that it would have lasted. I did not know how deep we were going to get. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know we have gone deep. <laughs> Four <laughs> years, five years? So good. Yeah, we have, like, five years we've been working together on this. Yeah. Now. Yeah. And we have heard so many, we have met so many people, and we have heard so many incredibly personal and profound stories. Um, and made some good art together, yeah, you know? Yeah, we and this on is, it. Yeah. So it's really great. So. We really appreciate that you guys came out. But not everybody loves tattoos. Well. They're not for everybody. Maybe not everybody. Not everybody. I mean, it's interesting that we're here at the JCC, right? And t Jews, tattoos, you don't normally think, right? Like, nobody's talked about this. It's interesting. Can I just ask, if you're a Jew with a tattoo, can you raise your hand? There's not many of us. There, uh, there's actually, there's That's a good amount. True. Come on. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. Also, well, I know did you raise your might, hand? I did. I okay. should raise it three times. Let's, I just, I feel like that's a good point. Three times. Okay. Th three tattoos. Three times. So, but we might have a Jew with a tattoo in the room. <laughs> I tried. I tried. Please welcome um, to the ladies, stage, Daniel, Daniel Handler. Handler, AKA Lemony Snicket. <laughs> Woo! Daniel Handler. Who, by the way, um, you guys know a series of unfortunate events is being made into a Netflix series and a new trailer is coming out tomorrow. So, yeah. Anyway. You. Uh, hi. I, um, it's true. I'm a Jew. <laughs> um, the next time I will be in this room is for my son's bar mitzvah, to which almost all of you are not invited. <laughs> Um, but I, ha I have a new tattoo that Wendy gave me, um, and it took, well, I, I mean, I, I feel a little <laughs> self-conscious because I feel I will be expressing opinions that are not popular in this room, but that's Judaism. Um, <laughs> that's what we do. And, and I also just feel, because we've just had a long evening of kind of respect and admiration for tattoos, and... I just, in all honesty, I just feel like tattoos are really for sluts. <laughs> um, my wife has a tattoo. Stand up, honey. <laughs> Lisa right Brown, yeah. everybody. Lisa Brown. Um, <laughs> and I just feel like like, no matter where on your body a tattoo is, it's really a tramp stamp. No matter what, <laughs> it's for sluts. And, <laughs> and I'll say, just by sluts, what I mean is that you enjoy sex and you're not ashamed of it. <laughs> and I'm, <laughs> I, I'm not comfortable with that. <laughs> I, know, I've, I know it's not, whatever, the dominant, whatever. But, um, <laughs> I just, I mean, honestly, I just feel it's like, um, it's like a greatness that <laughs> is fading from America right now. Mm. And I know that, like, there's an election coming up, and I don't want to endorse anyone um, on the stage of the JCC, but I will just say that I feel like people should vote for someone who would know what that greatness really is that's gone mm. and to bring it back in a way. Do you know what I mean? 
And so... Like a greatness back to America. To America. Mm. And so that's why I had Wendy give me this tattoo, and I'll show it. I'm not ashamed of it. And I just feel really... <laughs> America great again. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Daniel Hammer, ladies Daniel and Hammer. gentlemen. Come on. Woo! Nice work. <laughs> um, thank you, guys. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Long story short, it. vote on November 8th, right, but please. before you do, buy a book. We will we'll sign them signing. in the back. Wendy, if you buy two. I'll draw on you. <laughs> you can get the H, you can get whatever you want, but thank Where, you guys wherever you want. so much Almost. for celebrating this book Thanks with us. Thanks for coming out. And to out. our chefs. Yes, please, to everybody who participated. Stand up, chef. Stand up. Thank you. To the JCC, to, thank you to Jordan. Thank you. To Trish Richmond, if you're here, thank you. Thank you, everybody who contributed.